Good evening, I Rapstein, and this is Monday, the 8th of August, 2022, time just after 6 p.m. Central Time. I'm back with a swollen mouth, hard to talk, but I'm going to do it anyways, and I want to put these out for you once again. So while I was gone, what was the big event? 528,000 jobs. The biggest estimate I saw was 275. I saw one person maybe talking 300,000. Nobody 500,000 jobs. Will it be revised? Probably. But it's going to be a big number. They're not going to revise it to 300,000. They would have to say they made a pencil mistake somewhere. They're not going to do that. All right. Then we have CPI, PPI coming out. So what's the event? The event is the Fed has been given the clear runway. They have been told, Hey, you got three and a half percent unemployment, 40, 50 year lows. You're adding jobs like there's no tomorrow. Why don't you all just go ahead and do this? Let's raise rates 75 points, maybe another 75 right after September and get ahead of this inflation story. Do it, nip it in the bud quickly. You've heard that term, I'm sure. And why fight with anything one way or the other? This is what I'd be doing and, and what I think the Fed is going to likely do. Why not? What do you do if you have a hot CPI number or PPI number? It's just a lock it. So the stock market is rallying off the idea, hey, the Fed's going to end early. I accept that. But ending doesn't mean they're going to go to QE, quantitative easing or lowering of rates either. I'm not buying into that. You have to prove to the world and me that inflation, if it comes down from 9%, doesn't get stuck at 6, 5, some number. That is going to be a hard thing to do. Let's see how fast it falls and what it does. If it stays there, last I went to school, that's not the 2% number the Fed's looking for. Let's assume they'll adjust that to 3 to adjust for real-world events. Still almost double. Let's see what goes on here and what goes on. I've got my little kitty making me nutty here. And I want to show you all what I got myself one time. Is that not a cutie pie? <laughs> Ivy. Okay. All of 96 days old. And wanted a pet and I got one. Lost my buddy a while back. All right. Sorry about that, but my wife said do it. Okay. In the S&P. You're back over for the first time in a while, the 18-day average of closes. But you also got over it back here, and that gave up. I am not a doomsdayer. I am a realist. This has been a nice rally. I don't think that this market just set to keep rallying and going up here is the Fed is tightening. You can be in that school of thought, and I probably will have to come here and eat my words and say, hey, you guys were right, I was wrong. I'm not in that school of thought, period. I'm looking at some distribution taking place up here. It's been a heck of a run. It was easy for some traders back in here. Actually, some, uh, the first one I saw was what, Funstrap? They came out and he called the bottom, Tom Lee. He said, that's, your, that's the bottom of the market. Now, others have jumped on the bandwagon. A lot of them saying, I think we probably have seen low. That's not what Tom said. He said, that's your low. Okay. If he's right, great. But he also said $500,000 Bitcoin and people were buying it with both hands. He was saying it at $30,000. I saw him at $50,000. Well, those people lost a heck of a lot of money. The average guy can't afford to lose half his investment and just say, ah, so what? Just a coin, I'll put it away. And people are still saying they're going up in value. I still have to figure out what is their purpose other than speculation. In the S&P, you look at the swing line, you've got higher lows, higher highs. Trend is up. You've had this pattern for a while. You've come up, you first fought against the 100-day average. You've cleared that a little bit. And while you cleared it means you've opened up the ramp if you wanted to go up to 42, 44. That's another 90 points higher, the upper Bollinger Band. That's very possible. You also have an embedded reading. So Ira is going to make a prediction. If the red line closes under 79, this market has made a peak and it starts to decline to a minimum back to the 18-day average of closes. 
don't do that, you leave the door open for the 4244. It's that simple as I see it. Might as well stick my neck out in the NASDAQ. The upside target, 13,595 again. The market has stayed over the 100 day average. What's probably going to happen is the 18 is going to start climbing up towards that uh, green, the 100 day average. You want to keep your eye on the red. If it closes under 79, I look for the market to roll to the downside, bringing you into all this as a minimum, probably breaking the uptrend, and we'll see what happens at that point. Dow, same pattern. So I think the traders, if you understand my enhanced Bollinger Bands, the course that I have on our website at irapstein.com, understand exactly what I'm saying. I am telling them, yeah, if you're going to nibble and buy, that's what you're doing on pullbacks, given the caveat of where today is versus yesterday's highs. Lose the red line, you got to be out of everything. Then you're looking for the 18 day average of closes. And the same in the Russell, which I think will peak out anyways. Maximum numbers, 200 day average in that. You are not going to get up over that 200 day average and just keep running. I stuck my neck out. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. VIX Cash, still on a downtrend, embedded, could hit the lower band again. I contend the pros will. Right puts if it's hit, and then look for the market at the 18 day average to take money off the table. They did it back here, they did it here, and they got paid each time they did it. The T bond market, okay. So the market curve yield has gone in three months from end of May, June, from negative five to 10 under on the 210 to 40 over. What it means is people are saying that 30 year, the 20 year, folks, the economy is going to be so weak from what the Fed does that you can't put up interest rates and keep them at four or five percent for those big numbers there. You can do it short term. Ten year note. Be careful if you get under 119.7. This whole game's a house of cards that then can come down on you. In the dollar index, I'm looking that if the market can get over 106.81, we could get a pattern where the market, and I'm talking a close, wants to lift up and get back up there. This is the resistance zone. You had your big break into the Bollinger Bands. The pros covered, past tense. I don't think they're in right here. I think they're waiting to see what to do. That brings me up to this. August 8th, European traders, they're in Capri. They're in uh, Portofino. They're in gorgeous places, parts of Spain, Marbella. That's what they do in the month of August, especially the big traders. They have the money to do it. They're on yachts. They're on resorts. They don't work in August. So you're at the time frame in currencies that are difficult, always difficult right now. The week before the end of, September, of August, they start going back home and you start getting into the game in September. The whole thing changes. I've seen this my whole life and currencies are my favorite market. That is the scenario. When I would go uh, to Capri and other uh, places in the summer, I'd run into traders all over. we talk about it, whatever. I didn't know them. You meet them out. What do you do? What are you doing? Boom, away you go. In the British pound, higher high, lower and low, fighting right here for whatever it's going to be, okay? If it closes under the 18-day average, bearish. In fact, if you take out the lows of today, you heard me, the lows of today. So I'm looking at the market. Can I get this thing to move? Not yet. I think I can. Hold on. And there we go. Today's low in the market was 120.57. If you take that out, I think the pros will hit it there. Stops over today's high, looking to see what's underneath the market. Would not surprise me. Do I know they'll do that? I don't have any idea. But, you know, as a chartist, I can see what I think showing up. I don't see anything in Bitcoin. I see a drifting sideways market that's getting overbought. In Brent versus WTI, market sinking back for a correction. Getting over 775, 770, probably too much. And the market's backing off into the 660s. Brent, you've gone from the upper Bollinger Band to the lower. 
Does that make sense to you? Just swinging back and forth. Same thing in WTI. I don't want to be short against lower Bollinger Bands where pros take money off the table. Same in gasoline. I want to think that gasoline made its low. Whoa, what's Ira saying? The low could be at that 275, 75. First test if I'm right, and I don't know if I am. By the way, when I talk this way, it doesn't mean I tell a trader to buy. Everything's still bearish but oversold and hit downside targets. I'm thinking this next leg down had no verve to it. It didn't go anywhere. Next to me, like the market might be sold out. You've just come dramatically from, let's call it approximately the 390 level, down to $1.15. You know, it's nearly 40%, okay? I, I think you got cheap enough where the market can bounce on you for no reason at all. Weather breaking, but you're oversold natural gas. Looks to me like a top was made as it ran up there and then it gave everything up. Now, early in the mornings, if you're up like I am, at 5.30 in the morning, I talk about all this and a heck of a lot more. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is so simple. I'll get up and I record my vi different videos. You can get them for free. All you need to do is take a look and go to our website, by the way, just click above me. Unfortunately, I left this here. Just click above me. And when you click above me, your uh, cursor, you'll see an icon. Take our free offers. You can get a couple of weeks free to my advisory services, what I do in the mornings when I put out my subscriber updates, the written recommendations I do twice daily. Take a look at them. I'm I. Rapstein. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.